Hey folks, this is Waylon. We're going live on a beautiful snowy uh, boulder day. And I have uh, yet again another guest. Uh, she was posting, you know, I've been posting about having a hard time. I had a breakup. I had my mom's health has been a thing. My old dog died. Been having a rough year in some ways. Uh, laid off some we're great folks at Elephant because of uh, big tech algorithms, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I could play my violin, but a lot of us are having a, a rough time. So this lady who is living, you know, what appears to be the best life, she's in Bali, Francesca. Um, she was posting about having a really hard time when I came across her on the interwebs. And I invited her to come in here. She's a coach of some sort. And we will talk basically about kind of getting over FOMO, you know, fear of missing out, getting over the best life, getting over trying to live this perfect, amazing life, but still, how can we have a life of meaning where we can be honest and vulnerable, brave enough to be vulnerable about how we're actually doing? Um, yeah, you know, a lot of us are going through stuff. Hi. You're real. <laughs> I'm real. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm so good. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining. Um, thank you so, for having me. What's that? Thank you for ha having me. Oh, yeah, you bet. Of course. So, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe tell us a bit about your your day, you know, what your days are like in Bali. Um, and then we can jump into whatever we want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, Bali is paradise. So over here, it's really about chilling. For me, it's all about nourishing my body. Right now, I'm doing a lot of yoga. Um, as you mentioned before, I just went through a very dark night of the soul. And so I'm coming back into myself and I'm just re like reactivating myself from a different place. It's, uh, it's been, it's kind of like when you go through these moments of really a lot of darkness, um, there is this massive light that comes through afterwards. So you go into this new dimension of yourself and I'm actually exploring it now. It's activating, my business is becoming activated again. It's just been wonderful, actually. Yeah, so the question, you know, and I got, I actually wrote about this and got this question from a, oh, it's party now, from a reader uh, today um, is, you know, how do you get from here to there? Like I used to live in Vermont, we would be like, you can't get, you can't get there from here if the weather was hard, if there was too much snow. So like, you know, it's, it's easy to stay going from the darkness to the light. But obviously for you, when I first, I think connected with you, it was not an easy experience. It was a hard experience. So how did you take care of yourself or what, what helped you? What can be helpful to others here in terms of going from here to there? Um, yeah, it's, and you know, this is not my first time, not my first rodeo. I've been through suicidal depressions. I've been through, wow. yeah, I've been through dark nights of the soul many times before. It, it's been a 15 year journey of, you know, discovering who I am and releasing attachment to who I'm not. And um, one of the most powerful things that I work with uh, my clients with, you know, it's, learning how to accept your present moments and as you know many different spiritual teachers call it predicament you know right. how can you instead of resisting what's happening and what's unfolding in front of you how can you accept it and look at it with curiosity as hard as it sounds because obviously if you're in pain it's going to be really hard for you to be like oh i wonder what this is you know but but really accepting and flowing with uh, with the river as opposed to trying to swim against the current. So using the power of the river as your own and accepting and looking at it and seeing what's, what, what, what it's bringing up to the surface. Because at the end of the day, a dark period like this one is really helping you to look at yourself in a different way, to release attachment to identities that you've been you know, holding on to so strongly that you're not being able to see all the expansion, all the beauty that's right next to you because you're like, no, 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 this is, this is my reality. This is who I am. So I can't, I can't, I can't. And it's like, uh, hey, there's this amazing thing that's right next to you and you're not willing to see it because you're too scared of letting go. So these like dark periods for me are really powerful 
to help you to let go. I mean, they shake you. It's going through a hurricane. It's going through like, um, you know, an earthquake. And but then you sound so, okay, I'm going to. You sound so brave. Yeah. Like, honestly, it, when you describe it, it sounds almost like not a big deal. I think, especially in America, you know, where we're mm -hmm. all blaming conspiracies or blaming the government or blaming the Republicans or blaming the Democrats or blaming trans, you know, it's yeah. much easier when we're having a hard time to to blame the world in some way. And that doesn't yeah. mean that people don't have accountability out there sometimes or that we don't. But it sounds like, Francesca, you have a real willingness to be curious and to look at yourself and to learn and to be present with your predicament, as you said. It's so easy to get lost in the victim mentality because that's what we were taught from the very young age. I mean, whenever we were crying, our parents would come to help us, right? Come out of that predicament, for example. So, yeah. and you know, religion, we're taught that there's somebody that's more powerful, like a being that's more powerful than us, that's going to take care of things for us. So it's really easy for us to just like, okay, you take care of me. It's not my fault. It's not my responsibility. It's theirs. It's the government's. It's like, etc. But I learned from a very young age that I had all the power, that I'm the only one that's going to live my life for me, that nobody can, you know, do it for me. And, to, and so, to, and that me, was, a, yeah. Tell me about that a little bit. Like, how old were you and how did you learn that? Because that's a profound, I don't think we just yeah. go through the victim mentality, at least here in the US, we go through the like, the hate mentality. Like we'd rather make the whole yeah. world an enemy than mm -hmm. grow up. Yeah, it's it, yeah, exactly. Because it's a, it's a comfort zone. Like we don't really want right. to take responsibility for ourselves. Exactly. Was, um, that's so. That's such a good. I'm sorry. We're talking. Yeah. I'm talking over you. But that's such a beautiful way <laughs> to put it. It's the Instagram yeah. volume from Bali to Boulder. But um, <laughs> it's. Wait. What did you just say? That was so good. And then I got distracted by my volume. But we're not we're we're not willing to take responsibility for ourselves. Basically, mm. you know, it's it's putting the blame on, uh, and it's so important in every aspect of our lives. I mean, in our relationship with ourselves, in our relationship with like our love interests, in our relationship with our families, and everything. If we're not taking responsibility for ourselves, then we're really missing the point of what all of this like beautiful symphony of life is. Yeah. Mm. And just like to go back to what you said, um, I had been in a depress depression for years and until 21 and I hit like a suicidal depression. Like I just started just wanting to quit it all because I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, um, I couldn't stand it anymore. And at, at one point I, you know, I almost went through it. My mom helped me through that. And um, I realized that I needed to get rid, to let go of everything that had made me Francesca up to that point. So get rid of, like, I cut financial ties with my parents. I, I, I you know, came out of the university. I was studying architecture. I quit. I quit everything that I knew to, like, that was, like, comfort zone for me. I bought a one-way ticket to Australia and then I started traveling. And the thing when you travel is that you get to know yourself from a different perspective. You get to reinvent yourself. You're like, oh, people don't know me as Francesca Prati, this person, you know? So they're asking me who I am. Oh, oh, interesting. Who am I? So mm -hmm. you begin to go through that journey. And then when you, when you go through the darkness and into the light, and you realize that you've uncovered different aspects of yourself that you weren't aware of before, then you become more empowered in that process. So next time that you go through it, it's kind of like, okay, it's painful. It's super uncomfortable, but I know there's so much light coming. So I get to stay curious in this place because I already know what's coming after. This is why I feel so secure in this uh, experience because I've gone through it so much, like so many times. And because I've come to who I am right now because of these like initiations, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, you know, I've, I had a, a good friend, all of us in Boulder here did, uh, who um, decided to take his own life and, this year. And, uh, you know, we've all had dear friends, sadly, in our lives who have decided to end their life. And without any prejudgment on their decisions, you know, we know that there's a lot of sadness, there's a lot of confusion, 
there's a lot of isolation. So, you know, I really appreciate your, I was wa just walking with a friend through all the snow and she was like, oh, what's your uh, next interview about? Because I'm doing a whole bunch of these. And I said, you know, mm. I feel like Francesca, you're, you know, someone who is sort of the Instagram um, cliche from the outside, you know, you're, you're in Bali, you're living this beautiful <laughs> life, you know, but then you were being very mm -hmm. open about having a tough time and, and also that, that pilgrimage, you know, that rite of passage through that tough time and making friends with the darkness because the darkness isn't bad. And then, you know, I, I appreciate that. And I was like, well, we'll see if it's really helpful and genuine because I, I think it is, but you never know with Instagram, yeah. you know, we yeah. don't know each other. Yeah. <laughs> genuinely, real, I do genuinely uh, really know that a lot of people are having a hard time. And if they can see through the best life stuff, which can can be a little bit oppressive or intimidating or they feel left out you know like from the outside yeah. you're living someone's best you're living francesca's best life it looks pretty good yeah. Yeah. um yeah. but you know you're having a real human experience and and guiding others so i really appreciate it yeah thank, thank you yeah and you know it's easy for all of us to get caught up in comparison and seeing other people's edited lives on instagram and things like that yeah. Um, I have made it a point to always be an open book. So even if you can see like pictures that are beautiful and everything, I always love to share myself openly and vulnerably. Like if you read my, um, my posts, they are very open and I'm always sharing my processes yeah. because it's so important for other people, but also for myself. When I share myself so openly, so vulnerably, I am tapping into a new type of power within myself. And, yeah. and a deeper le level of acceptance of who I am and, you know, my processes as, as a human being, not making myself wrong for them. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's really important. And also like the beauty in Instagram and things like that, I do see it as a form of gratitude, like as a practice of gratitude, whenever we are sharing things on Instagram, like stories and things like that, if they're beautiful things, then we're actually deciding to focus on the beauty in our lives so that's also a, a very powerful practice that i found but i completely agree i mean there's so many people suffering right now they really need to hear from a person that has created the life that they want for example that yeah i do struggle as well yeah, yeah of course i feel unworthiness like i feel you know last last month as i was moving through this darkness i was feeling so much unworthiness every single person around me was more worthy than me Right. It's more worthy of being loved. To, more worthy. I bet yeah. it's easy to feel that actually being in Bali, you're surrounded by people having an amazing experience. And you're like, I'm in this amazing place. I remember being in Paris, you know, which is I love the French and I love literature and I love writers. You know, I love all this. So I'm in Paris. I'm biking around. I have friends, but I'm having this experience of like, you know, again, that what we call in Buddhism, hungry ghosts. You're like, no matter how much mm. you're doing, there's more out there that you're missing out on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, it's so easy to get lost in that as well, because then there's this rush. Like people are very rushed to get to the goal that they're wanting to get to. And when they get to it, it's not enough. So it's more like it's, it's, it's you know, cl climbing a mountain, you get to the peak and then they're, oh my God, there's two more peaks. I need to go like I, I'm not yeah. enjoying and I'm not celebrating getting to that peak. I'm mm. like, oh, it's not enough. It's not enough. It's the not enoughness uh, loop, you know, and it's, that's what it's I always say about. Sorry, the volume stuff. That's what I always say about um, coffee is, you know, especially here in America, we're a to go culture. So this coffee, if you think about it, is grown on a hillside somewhere. People work really hard. They roast it. They ship it 3000 miles then or maybe they don't roast it they ship it 3,000 miles it gets roasted here they make amazing coffee out of it in our cafe they serve it to mm. us and we're too busy unlike the italians often we're too busy to like sit down and enjoy it or lean against the bar we have to get it in a, like a plastic lined paper cup with a plastic lid yeah. and run around like <laughs> sipping it while we're driving and talk you know like yeah. that coffee worked hard to get to you like let's enjoy it let's slow down <laughs> I yeah. love that example. And, yeah. 
yeah, it's it's the same as dating these days. Like it's fast food, Tinder, and these things, or, or everything is fast food. Everything is like, and, yeah. And there's so much FOMO being created in people because yeah. of all the options. I mean, there's so much beauty in the internet and social media, being able to like see what what all the possibilities and opportunities we have. But at the same time, it's very like um, complex because you can get stuck in oh my life is not as good or I yeah. yeah I came to Thailand but Bali is right next to me so now I want to go there so I'm really not enjoying and not being fully right. present with myself. Yeah. Hmm. There's this yeah. great quote by Blaz Pascal, I don't know how to say their name, but um, that all of humankind's problems arise from humankind's inability to sit still for a minute in a room <laughs> alone by themselves. Like if we can just yeah. relax with our, <laughs> yeah. our nervous, fearful, excited energy, then we can yeah. enjoy things so more fully, feel more fully one of the one of the things that i used to struggle with the most was the doing because we were you know we were born into a society that really is all about the doing and what what have you achieved and what have you done outside of yourself constantly like what are the results of you know your actions and for me i've always been a very like peaceful person that just likes to flow and just be and I've had to work on myself to be able to let myself be more than do. You know, as, as you, I'm sure you've heard before, we're human beings, not doings, human doings, mm -hmm. right? And right now, like in this day and age for me, I can actually literally spend a whole day just not doing anything. Like just like staring at the ceiling. And I don't feel like I'm not productive enough, that I'm not going to be successful, that I'm missing something mm. or something like that. Like that for me is the most powerful thing that you can uh, master because yeah. that's when you get to know yourself deeply because we tend to hide ourselves behind the things that we do behind, you know, our products, our services, our relationships, our everything. But who are you beyond all of that? Mm. Your identity entity has been attached to so many different things that you've missed actually getting to know yourself and quite like in peace and quiet so who are you and it's so it is scary because that's where you invite yourself into the darkness because when you become quiet then all the things come up to the surface yeah. all your fears as well all your wounds all, all your unworthiness and securities the reasons why you attach your your identity to these people these experiences in the first place so it's that's why it's so scary and that's why we feel so uncomfortable going through the darkness because it's showing us sides of ourselves that we weren't willing to see before but actually the the darkness is showing us light. It's expansion. We weren't taught that way. But what if we were taught that way from the very beginning? Mm. Then we would be embracing our darkness in such a different way. And we, were, we would be using it to propulse us, to like catapult us, to really creating a life that we want, having clarity in terms of what we want in the first place, because a lot of people don't even know what they want, right? They're following rules and, and expectations from others so we right. would have clarity and we would go after it and we would be able to manifest it like that like i am now these days i'm able to manifest whatever i want very quickly because i've cleared up so much of the things that were keeping me blocked mm -hmm. so it's so, such a beautiful process going into our our darkness but of course it's scary and we feel so lonely but that is another point it's important to feel lonely so you don't hide behind anybody else. So you're like, they're all, oh, oh, this is me. Oh, okay. Am I comfortable being with myself? And moving mm. through that discomfort because that's actually helping you grow. Yeah. It, it reminds me of what you said about traveling. Like you're having that loneliness. You're have you feel exposed, but in that yeah. process, you're discovering who you are not. You're on, you're leaving a lot behind, but then you're also discovering maybe who you are. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, literally, when you are by yourself, you get to discover who you are. You get to look at yourself in a very powerful mirror and be like, oh, uh, oh, oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Like the, I you think know, that's been you, so... Go ahead. No, you go for it. You, well, you go for it. I, 
I think, you know, I'm, I'm 48. I think, you know, I, I've run Elephant for 20 years. So I've interviewed like thousands of people. <laughs> I've had all the wisdom. I've had all the Buddhism. I've had all these famous like people telling me about life. And then, you know, I have this incredibly humbling year, like a lot of us have had, but a year that just like, it was a little bit like the book of Job in the Bible, not to be melodramatic, mm. but my personal book of Job, I called it my cowboy song year in, in, in country songs. Sometimes the cliche is like, my pickup broke, my dog died, my girl left me, blam, blam, blam. And it was that kind of year. And, you know, it's incredibly like insulting or humbling where you're like, I've really worked hard to get to this mountain peak. And I get to this mountain peak and I just slid all the way down, you know. But it's like beautiful, said, isn't it? So much. What's that? No, I. I just said it's beautiful, isn't it? But just like it is. Yeah. But you know, so I've really been re inspired and you know, I've been like kinda like traveling, like what you said. I've been re inspired to yeah. talk with all these people and because especially people with a story similar to what what I ran into with you. And you know, a lot of people on Instagram love to share how vulnerable they are, but it's not always totally genuine, you know? It's like showing, yeah. it's sort of Woody Allen school of neurosis. Like I've suffered more <laughs> than you and therefore my story is amazing and you should like my- Yeah, it's my, attachments. Yeah, yeah. but uh, so I was hoping you had the real raw, genuine, you know, <laughs> stuff. And it's great to hear. I really yeah. feel like yeah. it's very helpful. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And uh, I I love it. It's, it's, it's the process, right? We- we detach ourselves like we go through these dark periods and we become detached from the identity that we created and that we had attached to for i don't know x amount of time and then uh it's like the, the world and the universe and life is like no you don't know you you really don't know like you think you know but yeah. you don't know so we're gonna take you up it. and then we're gonna bring you down yeah i think <laughs> that's it I think, I think life was like <laughs> you you think you've accomplished something you have all your ducks in a row basically let's see yeah. if we can just kind of like you know have a tornado blow through town <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's and it's the only way because we're so attached because there's so much fear and the the, the question underneath it all is like who am i because you're wanting mm. to look you're hmm. wanting to figure out who you are because it's like it's it's, it's the, the the life question like who are we and what is this yeah so we're wanting to find yeah. really hard truths and we attach ourselves to the things that we think are going to be those life rafts the, oh, oh okay this is me this is me okay this is me so we attach yeah. ourselves to that and we're holding on for dear life and the only way for us to release attachment is by a hurricane coming through like four, like F, uh, F5 uh, for hurricane, right? That's the only way. So it yeah. shakes you. You don't know what's up. You don't know what's down. And then you're like released from that attachment and you get to uncover new expansion, new dimensions within yourself. Yes. You get to really dive into new realms that you've never and I think even, that's what never you even and I, thought existed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that's what you and I have been going through is... Mm -hmm. You know, I can't speak for you, but reading what you've been writing, like you lose everything that you thought mattered on some level. And then yeah. you're forced to change and grow. And that's life. You know, that's beautiful, potentially. But you have to get okay. through that, through yeah. that tornado or that hurricane. Yeah. And it's so it's so easy to get lost in the darkness and get lost in victimhood. And that's where, oh. and going back to not taking responsibility. If you're moving through darkness, if you're moving through something really hard, then hopefully you're surrounded by people who can help you see that there's light, uh, you know, at the end of the tunnel and that this is ac actually happening for you, not to you. And that is the limiting belief. This is happening to me. Why is this happening to me? Why this? Like it's a punishment from life or from God or from the universe. And it's not. Actually, it's a creation by you. And I'm not going to go into the spiritual talk here, but it's, it's happening for you. It's I think the spiritual a, a, talk know, has already a, been, a, I think the spiritual <laughs> talk has already been happening. It's too late for that. 
I know, but like, you know, like uh, the question of who we are and like, if I say oh, that I you see. are me and I am you and, and yeah. that, that's, it's an extensive topic, but yeah. And in terms of that, it's like, this is happening for you. So don't get lost in the victim story because yeah. the darkness is there for you to see your light. I mean, when it gets, becomes even darker, then it's easier to see a brighter light even, right? Um, but people get stuck in that. Oh and they become enamored with their victim story and like you know just like come to me and and yeah and save me type of thing yeah yeah i think i kind of got caught up in that because i think there's some level of like i've worked really hard to accomplish mm. a lot of things not just for myself but you know creating a platform for thousands and thousands of writers to share genuine stuff and try you know i'm really concerned about climate crisis and equal rights and all these big mm important things and then having some some of that as well as in my personal life fall apart i think i fell into this victimhood i didn't think anyone like why was me doing it yeah i didn't think like god was doing it to me or you know francesca was doing it to me but i definitely thought like why is this happening like i'm yeah. such a good boy like a yeah like a dog like, <laughs> yeah, yeah the reward right yeah because yeah. we've been taught and and it's great that you, first of all, it's great that you are able to express it very openly because as you said before, it's so important for people to see that even if you've been really successful, you still go through these things, you know, it doesn't it's matter how far you've gone. Yeah. I mean, we all, all have and, you, I'm sure, the yeah. people you're coaching and people should go follow you, your accounts up there, you do coaching, but like we get messages from people who are so alone and so struggling mm -hmm. and i'm not alone at all i have this huge community and i'm struggling so yeah. you know it's a matter of life and death that people i hope hear and take in this message that there's good stuff if you go through it you can't skip it you can't bypass it right you can't go over it no you can't it didn't happen no no i love the phrase the only way out is through it's helped me mm. so much because whenever a storm is coming i'm like okay i need to just like surrender and the other thing that i always say to my clients is trust and surrender trust and surrender because you really need to trust our minds are not going to be able to understand what we're going through or they're trying to make mathematical equations out of something that really doesn't fit into that category so it's really all about okay the universe life is offering me this this present moment how can i trust it without needing to understand the why or the when or the how, mm. but just surrender to it, surrender to the beating of the waves, to the beating of the wind, to the currents, and you'll come out of it. Don't get stuck there. Don't try to hold on to something because that's going to make it more like painful, but just like surrender to it. And when it, it's time, then you, you'll come out and you'll breathe and you have to trust that. And it is yeah. a relationship with ourselves because it, 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 it comes down to how much we were taught to only love our light. You know, if we were crying when we, we were little, our parents didn't enjoy that because they felt uncomfortable. They tried changing it. So they taught us to love ourselves conditionally. Only when we're happy, when we're like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, we're being a good girl, good boy, whatever, then we're being loved. But if we're crying, if we're having a tantrum, no, that's not, you know, we're not yeah. lovable there. So yeah. we're not, when, when we're having a tantrum, there's something coming, you know, there's, yeah. there's darkness coming and we have to experience it, but we were taught that that was bad. And so it stays with us. It's the, that, that belief stays with us. So we experience it in the way that we experience it now because of our childhood. It's so interesting. incredible. Yeah. yeah. I think my mom was like better than most at like, she kind of, she, I always would joke that I could like be a, mass murderer or something and she <laughs> she'd be like on the phone with her girlfriends being like i'm so proud not of me being a mass murderer <laughs> but she was just so fundamentally loving yeah um no matter what but yeah mm. i think that's really interesting we're still conditionally loving of ourselves and we were taught or we inherited that from society from our parents from our schools yeah 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 and it it's something that really sets the tone for the rest of our lives. It's loving ourselves conditionally as opposed to accepting ourselves 
unconditionally and loving and 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 learning how to move through discomfort learning how to move through pain through suffering through sadness through grief and celebrating it as opposed to you know just attaching to it and mm. and asking the why 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 me when it rains it pours and all the things and we go through these like massive periods and how beautiful would it be for us to be able to navigate them with like beauty and power and love and you know celebration right yeah but that's all like you know we have this idea of how we should be going through our lives or what we should accomplish or how you know and that's the virtue and also the awful part about the humbling tornado or hurricane is it's an incredibly raw new experience even if we you and i have been through a dozen tough experiences like really tough you know what you were talking about when you were yeah. a teenager um yeah let me ask you a question about trust because and surrender because i don't tot i i like it like halfway but i don't know if you know mm -hmm. that quote like trust in god but tie your camel up just the same like we have i think okay. it's like an error my phone's battery my phone's uh, battery is dying um it's an arabic <laughs> aphorism and it, and it's basically like trust in god you know trust and surrender but you still have to do the work you still have to show up yeah. lean into the tough stuff what yeah. tell me about that balance I think that it's important. I mean, it, it's it, it really talks about free will as well, mm -hmm. like understanding that you are the creator and you get to decide. And, and, and if you want to move through something, then you'll move through, through it. And if you don't, then you don't. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it comes down to the belief that you have around who you are. So I, I believe that I am God as you are God. I believe that we are one consciousness, right? And I believe that I am the sole creator of my existence of my life. And so whatever is unfolding in front of me then i believe that i created it and this is me actually tying the camel up but also yeah. of course you know having the tools and and instead of running away away from it honoring my creation honoring okay i created this toxic relationship i created this you know failure in my business i created it so instead of being a victim and running away from it got kind of like okay this is happening for me i created this so i'm gonna lean into it and i'm gonna work with it so for sure there's a balance between the two and it's not like yeah oh yeah i'm just going to i'm just going to release anything and i'm just gonna stand here and i'm not gonna do absolutely anything about it no it's like no you're a human being yeah <laughs> but like you're also here in the third dimension needing to do the, the actual work so it's a balance it's like a combination of the two for me yeah and then i think there's like a third factor too i i love how you said that um that was helpful so thank you um no worries. but there's another factor which you know we write about a lot on elephant equity you know interdependence um not everyone has the privilege right to trust surrender be accountable a lot of people you know education money race gender there's a lot of you know a lot of people who are don't have a sort of the space in their lives like we saw that in the pandemic a lot of people mm -hmm. couldn't even isolate a lot of people had including my um fiance at the time you know we're working as essential workers you know so yeah. a lot of people don't have the the luxury right to um you know, to trust, surrender, all these things. They have to kind of fight just to get to a point of, um, you know, my mom, I grew up really poor with my mom. And I'm not going to pretend I was like not privileged in some ways, but she had a tough life raising me alone, making 12,000 a year at her peak, working two jobs, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. no car. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. So I honor what yeah. she did, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, my my views on this may be a, a bit controversial because okay. because i believe that we're all equally powerful and my beliefs around life is that we choose the life that we want to experience before incarnating yeah. um yeah. and so like somebody I think that i would, always use buddhism would yeah. generally agree with you it's not us choosing it but it's sort of our karma choosing it um yeah but yeah and so yeah and um and so 
and I always use this example of a person living under a bridge. And I always say that person is as powerful as I am. So yeah. instead of me buying into I'm more privileged and he is more unlucky, I actually look at that person and I say, oh, that's an, that's an interesting life that they chose. Yeah. And they're as powerful as me and that life is giving them so much. So I honor that and I celebrate that. When yeah. I look at other people and I say they're more privileged, I'm actually taking away their power. I, I can't yeah. do that, obviously. But in my mind, yeah. I'm more powerful yeah. than them. And no, I personally don't believe... Yeah. You're, you're, you're objectifying or patronizing someone. You know, you're typifying yeah, I, them. Like um, one of my favorite writers, F. Scott Fitzgerald, said, no human being is a type. Like we like to make... Like you're a type. Yeah. You're a spiritual... Yeah yogini in bali that there's <laughs> yeah. truth in that you know you're, you're spanish i think there's truth in all of that but it doesn't define you you know no i mean at the end of the day these are all labels right and and right, exactly and it, it the only reason why we go into labels is because we feel comfortable with that we don't feel like whenever somebody asks me where i'm from i'm like exactly. i'm from nowhere and they're, they, I can see the short, like the short circuit, uh, like going, their minds are going like, uh, what do you mean you're yeah. from nowhere? They really need an answer. And I'm like, okay, I was born in Ecuador, la, 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 la. But really, I'm not from anywhere. Uh. But they need to put me in a category because that's where they feel comfortable. Oh, no, I thought I you were Spanish. I there. didn't even know. No. I guess I, I, uh, I, I uh, was equally ignorant. I, I had no idea where you were from. And that's but, okay. But I guess. I, 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 yeah, my mom is Chilean, my dad Italian, and I like was brought up in different countries, and I've been work, like traveling for the last fifteen years. So really, I'm not from anywhere. I really don't feel part of any place, and right. I feel part of all of the places. Like my home is me. Um, but yeah, going back to that, I just don't believe in victim uh, in that type of you know privilege or whatever. I feel like every single life has beauty in it and has pain in it and that they're just not comparable. And I, you know, uh, a documentary that really helped me when I was going through another dark period, which is, I, I'm sure that you've seen it, Happy? Not sure if, the, if you've heard about it? Not sure. No? It's a really, it's, sure. it's, you know, the, the study of happiness and they compare, uh, you know, the, a person with middle income in the US having their house, their like two cars, their family, la la, and um, a job. And they compare it with uh, a person in India that's like running around without shoes, like dragging these like taxis that they have yeah. and taking people around and living in this hut made of plastic and things like that. Yeah. And they talk about and they compare both and they say they have the same level of happiness. The person yeah. in the U.S. that's worked for all of these like, you know, material things and has like peace and la la. Yeah. And this other person that lives in India that barely has a house and they're all yeah. like sleeping on top of one another. They have the same level of freedom of happiness. Sorry. So we tend to judge based on our filters, looking at the person that we have in front of us saying, oh, poor them. But how do we know? Why? Why should we? We compare ourselves our pain or our happiness to somebody else's how do we know we have no idea and yeah. us trying to do it is just us trying to feel better about ourselves and us trying to yes take no. away I the think... power from the other person but yeah that's my yeah. my opinion but of course no yeah. no i think i mean we you know i've written about all this stuff forever so i'm i'm a little bit of like a i'm always like i feel like i'm like a walking essay on some level <laughs> but yeah for sure there's They've done studies where anything over, you know, money can matter to happiness, to security, living on a safe street where you're not, you know, uh, going to get shot or violated sexually mm -hmm. can matter to happiness. Education okay. can matter to happiness. But at the same time, exactly what you said, that this sort of speedy middle class capitalism life doesn't necessarily lead to any more joy than someone with a different set of values that honors family and simple yeah. food and daily exercise you know the blue zone a lot of the blue yeah. zones if you know about those aren't wealthy right yeah i mean it, it's, so it's a very interesting topic yeah it's a very interesting topic and 
I always, I always say that beyond that, and, and I know that there's a level to which, you know, it does matter, like money does matter and, you know, you, you well, security well, yes and everything. And, no, and then like uh, from, yeah, from a certain level yeah. up, then, you know, you can be a millionaire, you can make a hundred thousand right. dollars a year and it's exactly the same. But exactly. beyond that, it's, it's just not comparing ourselves in our in our experience of life to others because we all have such different filters such different backgrounds um we really cannot know we and and it really feeds into the guilt in a lot of different people as well especially the word privilege triggers so many people in this way or that way right like the people that feel guilt about it and the people that feel rage about it and um, yeah. for me, it's it's it, for me, it's just a mute point. It's it's not comparable. Like we cannot compare. And um, I see and I hear so many clients as well sometimes say no, but I, I shouldn't complain about this or I shouldn't feel bad about this because like, I mean, your experience is valid. And yeah. this is where the, no, the, I agree the, with you the on conditional that. love, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the conditional in love my, comes in. I, I wrote the second book and you know a lot of people have observed this there's a third choice with privilege you know you can ignore it or you can have rage like you said you can say you know to hell with i don't care about racism i enjoy racism whatever sounds like someone is making a, a cappuccino <laughs> it's a buzz <laughs> that just came through <laughs> it's great you know you can pretend privilege doesn't exist you can feel guilty which doesn't do anyone any good and you can minimize your own experiences but the third choice yeah. is if you do have privilege you have some privileges i have some privileges you can share them and use them to be a benefit and from a buddhist point of view that's the highest privilege is to get to serve others yeah. not from a place of you know poverty mentality but a place of c compassion and caring yeah. Uh, yeah, that, like you said, is based on equality, based on respect, you know? Yeah, and it's so beautiful when we get to a point where we do feel like we are one, like we are all connected and that we're actually here not as enemies, but as mm. like schoolmates, if you will. Mm. And um, feeling, I mean, can we all look for a sense of belonging. We all look for that connection with other people because it's so powerful, because it reminds us of who we are, what like our essence is. Mm. We experience so much separateness here. You are you and I am me. And it can be a very lonely place when actually it's not reality. The reality is that we are all love. So how can we come back to that is by experiencing ourselves through you know, like, yeah, helping out and, and helping in a community or, you know, I'm a, I'm a mentor, I'm a coach. So this is exactly what I do. I help people, um, you come back to themselves and explore, exactly. like experience their, their reality, like, because I love it. And because it also helps me. It's a two way street. Yeah. You, when you're helping someone, you're also helping yourself. Totally. So it's beautiful. We, we, we just like grow together. We wake up together. We expand together. It's the most beautiful thing. Yeah, one of my favorite historical figures, Eleanor Roosevelt, who is often called like the first feminist, but she had this great quote that she was like, she grew up very unhappy, maybe a little bit similar to what you were saying. She grew up incredibly mm. unhappy. Everyone called her ugly and kind of like, she, she had a rough childhood. And then at yeah. some point she discovered service and helping others mm. and she, she said, the day I discovered service was the first day I experienced joy. Like it gives as mm. much to you, if not more, if you're doing it genuinely. Yeah. And she said, yeah. from that point on, all I wanted to do was serve others. Yeah, it, it's yeah. so beautiful. I had a client the other day ask me, why do you do this? Like, why are you a mentor? Why are you a coach? And the first thing that I said was for myself, mm. because when I help you know, and, I, and I'm very unapologetic and I'm very open and, and authentic in my communication because I find it so freeing for myself. Um, yeah. And I do it for myself because I grow so much. Yeah. Because I experience myself in very deep, beautiful dimensions that otherwise I wouldn't be experiencing myself. Totally. So it's just, it's such a beautiful thing because everyone wins. Everyone wins. Amen. And it's like about we were we were talking about this you and I in our chat, 
and it was like we're going through darkness and i and we're posting about it or you're you were talking about it with your friends or whatever and and i realized that not a lot of people were reaching out to me asking me how i was even though i was sharing it very openly oh yeah that was that powerful is, yeah i love that i love that and, you shared that because that felt yeah. like you were being vulnerable but then you were vulnerable about being vulnerable and having no one you know we call it the bystander uh phenomenon yeah. like everyone looks but everyone thinks oh so other people are caring for francesca other people are yeah. checking in i don't need to yeah yeah and it was it was a powerful experience for me as well because i was like whoa it's it's incredible how we really live detached from one another and i and i i was a very person like a person that really cared about independence like just being you know you uh, you uh, with your life me with my life etc but this kind of opened my eyes and and i said no i need to come back to a better balance with this mm -hmm. i need to come back to yes of course i i am responsible for my own life they are responsible for their lives i'm not going to carry anybody because that's not my job but i can still extend a hand and say are you okay and even yeah, just exactly. asking are you okay that in itself is boom so powerful mm -hmm. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm super good right now. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> I am. I'm I'm yeah, I think similar to you. I I have the that word again. I have the great privilege of getting, you know, like this conversation is work for me. You know? I get my work is my heart and my life's path and I get to hopefully have it be of some service or benefit to others. and um I, that gets to be my work every day i love it and um mm. you know if i'm going through a tough time it's an opportunity for me to connect with other people going through a tough time and if i'm celebrating life and you know having the spring time of my of my joy or my love you know then i get to connect with, with other people about that and you know mm. elephant has many many writers who are we're all sharing wherever we're at and trying to find some sort of genuine wisdom forward and i think yeah. the tricky thing is sometimes when people like you or me are in a vulnerable tough place we get bad advice we get advice from the world saying shut up you should be ashamed or pretend it's not happening be tougher you know so. yeah yeah uh, and especially as a man in this society like don't even get me started with that with women in a way it's been easier because we've been taught that it's okay to be in touch with our emotions and go through these things but as a man yeah. and right now yeah. it's it's becoming better you you guys are getting more more support and you're waking up yeah. uh, more and more and you're being more in touch yeah. with your feminine a little bit energy better ish i think in your but, uh, my world yeah. i think in our world francesca is getting better but the vast yeah. majority of male culture Yeah. is not getting any yeah. easier or kinder you know it's true but the ripple effects of the of our world sure. getting better or it's you know sure. maybe we won't see it right now but we will end up seeing it i mean the I like world is shifting yeah like, very positive yeah, attitude no. i like that no yeah, you're right you're, you're right i that. see i see it yeah yeah, yeah. and it's Aww. beautiful yeah well, you <laughs> been just what i hope for totally genuine totally helpful totally <laughs> present i really appreciate uh your coming on francesca i appreciate you inviting me i really enjoyed this and i'm sure that we'll have so many more conversations about this and yeah it's been beautiful yeah. and thank you for for having this platform as well because it helps it helps so many people it's yeah it's very powerful and i congratulate you for it yeah thank you is important yeah. to congratulate me for it before it all falls apart in the next tornado. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It yeah. will still stand. It will just no, come I back know. to I... life in a different way. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, Francesca, yeah, yeah. I would say enjoy your day in Bali, but I think it'll be hard not to, especially in the grounded <laughs> present state of mind you're in right now. Yeah, true. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. Enjoy the snow over there. Oh, and, so beautiful. Um, Oh. Yeah. I saw. I saw. Beautiful. Yeah. And uh, um yeah. Thank you so much. Let's do it again sometime. Francesca, thank you. Definitely. Okay. Gracias. Gracias. Bye everyone. Good night.